What's Git? Git is a version control system based on the beautiful distributed tree model. How do you use it? I have no idea. Just memorize these commands. If you get errors, save your work elsewhere and download a fresh copy. Git Rebase is a tool that allows you to rewrite history in Git to keep it clean and linear. I'll show you why it's useful and I'll show you how to do it. Typical Git workflow starts when you clone the remote repository to your local system, for example, from GitHub. This copies the entire repository from the remote to your local and you get the latest version of the default branch, which is main or master, depending on how old you are. At the very beginning, your local copy is exactly the same as remote. But then at one point you decide to create a feature, an awesome feature, and you create a feature branch for it. So you create a feature branch AF, and then you push the first commit into that feature branch. You make the first commit in that feature branch. That first commit has the latest commit of main as a base. Basically, the latest commit of main is the parent of that first commit in your feature branch. Then, for example, you create another commit in your feature branch, and that second commit in a feature branch points to the first commit as a base. And so at that point, you have a feature completely done, but while you're working on the feature, your team progressed and your team merged additional commits into main. So there's, let's say there's two additional commits into main since when you cloned. When you push your feature, when you push your branch to the remote to eventually create a pull request for the team, this will look like this. So this will recreate your commits in the remote exactly as they look on your local system. And this will create a feature branch AF in the GitHub that starts exactly from the point when you created the branch. That's not ideal because that pull request does not have the latest changes made by your team. And ideally, before you merge that pull request, you want to make sure that your changes work together with those latest changes with your team. You could test your latest changes together with the changes from the main uh, two different ways. You could either, on your local system, you could either merge the latest copy of main into your feature branch, or you could rebase your feature branch on top of main. I'll show you how to do both. So let's say if you decided to go ahead and merge, first you need to download the latest changes from a main branch onto your local system. To do that, you run git fetch origin main, and that copies the latest commits into your local copy of the repository. And now your local copy looks exactly as remote. At this point, if you merge the main into the feature branch, this will create a merge commit in your feature branch. And it'll look like this. This merge commit has two parents, the latest commit from your feature branch and the latest commit from main. And now at that point, this commit has all the changes that you made in the feature branch and your team made in the main branch. And you can test and that looks good. So if you decide to push that up, uh, that will also create a the same merge, merge commit on the remote and it'll look exactly the same. However, that's not ideal because when you merge that pull request eventually into main, that creates yet additional merge commit and that adds all of your previous commits in your branch, including that old merge commit into the main. And that creates a whole bunch of mats. And this is how this looks. The better way to do it is to use the git rebase. You want to rebase your local copy of your feature branch on your local system first. And what that does, git rebase uh, command, it simply replaces your commits, your same two commits, on top of latest commit in the main branch. It creates two additional commits on top. The first one is the copy of this one, and that commit points to the latest commit in the main branch, and then it creates another commit on top of that one, the copy of this one. And then, once the commits are copied, the original commits are removed from that feature branch. And now uh, your local copy is fully rebased on top of latest commit in main. However, your previous version of your branch AF still exists on the remote and you can't simply push the new version of your feature branch because that will be a conflict. You will have to force push your copy to the remote. When you force push, uh, this completely rewrites the remote copy of the AF to look exactly like it looks on your system. Perfect. So now uh, the remote repository looks exactly the same as your local. And if you merge that pull request for that feature branch AF into main, 
that can be done with the process called fast forward because there was no more changes since when you branched git now can simply fast forward and replay and just add these commits directly into main branch without creating any merge commits and so once that's merged and connections are made like this you could simply remove your branch and your commits with exactly the same SHA codes are now integrated into main branch. That makes for a nice, neat looking history in Git. Before we try this Git workflow in the terminal, let's summarize. First, uh, you want to run git fetch origin main to download the latest commits from remote main branch into your local system. Then you want to run uh, git rebase origin slash main to rebase your feature branch on top of latest commit in the main branch. If you previously pushed your unrebased feature branch onto the remote, you're going to have to use the git force push or git push minus f origin af to force push your copy of your feature branch to the remote. If you did not push your branch before the rebase, then you won't have to use the force push. You could simply use the git push and that will create a brand new branch with the same name on the remote. A couple of gotchas before we move forward. Avoid rebasing any shared or public branches because if somebody has that branch checked out and you you rebased it on your local system and pushed and forced pushed it up, then uh, that person would gonna have to um, back up their changes somewhere and then do git reset minus minus hard to force override their uh, copy of that branch on, on their system, which is not ideal. Also, please be careful uh, when you use this for the first time because I've uh, lost a bunch of code to this uh, because I didn't know what I'm, I was doing. And before you're comfortable, it's always a good idea to make a copy of your local repository somewhere before you run the rebase process. However, uh, in most scenarios, if rebase, if something goes wrong with the rebase, you could almost always roll up or roll it back with a git rebase minus minus abort. Before we start, let's tune our tools a little bit. If you run the git log by default, that shows you the quite verbose history. And in git log, the latest commits are always at the top and the oldest commits are at the bottom. To make the history a bit more concise, we can add a few switches to git log command and uh, to make it look like this. So just one line for each commit and then a short commit hash code and the branch name this commit belongs to. And these switches are easy to remember if you just uh, use a dog. So a d o g a dog. And so I created a, an alias for this. If I run git dog, that does the same thing. So this, uh, I have a terminal open with two tabs on it. The first terminal, first tab is the GitHub copy of the repository. And then the second tab is Alex. That's a directory where I cloned my GitHub repository. And if you run the git dog on both, uh, it's gonna be exactly the same, exactly the same two commits. The first commit was to add readme, and the second commit is to fix typo. And if you look at the files, uh, there's only one file. There's a readme file. And let's look at the readme. It has only just one line, company handbook. And uh, here in the clone, the same exact same thing. So let's say uh, I'm going to create a feature branch at this point to edit the readme. And so I'm going to check check out the create new feature branch my for or my awesome feature, uh, AF. And git checkout minus B creates new branch and checks out that new branch. So if you run git branch command right now, you're on the AF branch. You still have a copy of the master branch, but you're on the AF branch. Let's uh, check out the history. So history of the AF branch is exactly the same because I did not make any commits. But notice now uh, my uh, couple of more branch names in my clone here. Uh, I have my head of my feature branch points to this commit. Also the origin master, which is my remote GitHub repository and origin head points to the same exact commit. And my local master branch points to the same exact commit. So a lot of branches point to this commit. So if I create, and if I make a change, let's say just like uh, Nick Offerman in his Parks and Recreation, he said, uh, be a man in a company handbook. I'm gonna save that, I'm gonna stage that for commit. I'm gonna commit that. And I'm gonna add the commit message, edit handbook. Uh, if you look at the git dog, now I created a new commit. And so my point, uh, my head of my feature branch now has this new commit. But then origin master still points to that old fixed typo commit. Uh, let's say while I'm working on my feature, my team on GitHub end uh, added more changes. Let's say they added the license file. And license file has do whatever, whatever you want. Stage that for commit, 
and then add license. Uh, let's run the git dog. So this is how my GitHub copy of the repository now looks. I have uh, additional commit. I have third commit that uh, grows from the previous one from the fixed typo, and now my head of my master branch on GitHub points to this latest commit. But if I run git dog on my clone, I still have no idea that my team progressed. And to get the latest commits from the remote branch, I want to run git fetch origin master. That brings latest commit from commits from the master branch into my local. And see, this is what happens. So my edit handbook commit from my feature branch now grows from the old head of the master branch, fixed typo. And so the, my branches are diverged. Also, remote master branch has this additional commit add license. However, my, my local master branch does not have that yet because it did not, did not copy these commits from the remote into my local. So at this point, if I push my branch, if I push origin AF, that will add the AF branch to the GitHub. And if you run git dog on GitHub, uh, you'll see exactly the same picture. So my AF branch added handbook commit grows from the fixed typo commit. The AF branch does not have add license. If I look at my AF branch, uh, see there's no add license file because if I run git dog, I don't have the, those latest changes. At this point, I can either merge uh, the remote master branch into my feature branch, which will create the merge commit, or I can rebase my feature branch AF on top of latest origin master branch. To do that, I'm just going to do git rebase origin master and look at the git dog. And now uh, this could be confusing to some people, but because I did not check out the master branch, I did not check out the local master branch, or I didn't do anything to the local master branch, uh, it still points to that latest fixed typo commit, the previous fixed typo commit. But now remote master has this add license commit, and my edit handbook commit uses the tip of the remote master as a base. Uh, this is all on my Alex clone. So if I go to GitHub uh, and do git dog, because I did not push anything, my GitHub still has the old version of the AF branch, where edit handbook points to the fixed typo commit. So uh, now I'm going to try to push origin AF and see what happens. So I can't push because uh, my push was rejected. I could not fast forward. I failed to push remote refs, some refs to GitHub. Updates were rejected because the tip of your current branch is behind its remote counterpart. So to integrate, etc., etc., etc. So I know that my local copy of my AF branch is absolutely correct. So I want to override the remote copy of AF branch uh, by force pushing. So I do force push minus F origin AF. That force pushed. If I do git dog, now everything is clean and beautiful. So I've got two original commits then the add license commit my team added, and then my latest edit handbook commit rebased on the latest commit from the master branch on, on top. And so at this point, I can do this. I can do git merge AF. This will merge uh, AF branch into the master branch. Uh, typically, you would do that on GitHub by press, pressing the merge button, but uh, we're just playing that in a terminal, run the git dog. And now see this latest commit now is present on both in the tip of the master branch on GitHub and uh, as a latest commit in the AF branch. I still have this AF branch here, so typically when I merge, I don't need that branch anymore. So I do delete branch, and now on my local repository, I can switch to master branch. So now on my clone, my Alex clone, I'm still on the AF branch, even though it's merged into the remote master branch. I can switch to my local master branch on my clone, and I can and see this little symbol. I'm using the ZSH async plugin to show me some status for my Git repository. Now I can pull a few commits from the remote. Uh, and now my local master branch is fully up to date. So this is my local master. It's fully in sync with the origin master. It's in sync with the origin AF and uh, in sync with my local copy of the AF branch. Still have my AF branch. I could do git branch minus D to delete AF. All right, in the future videos, I'm going to talk about how to resolve conflicts during the rebase or how to use git rebase to squash commits, multiple commits into one uh, together, how to change any commit messages or how to uh, reshape the history before you push it up and share with your team. I hope this was useful and I'm going to see you in the next video.
Thank you.